Hello and welcome to the latest episode of On The Money, a weekly look at how to get the most out of your savings and investments. For this episode, we're discussing how the combination of Alliance Trust and Witten will work in practice. Joining me to explain all is Craig Baker, Global Chief Investment Officer at Willis Towers Watson, which is the investment manager for Alliance Trust, which is now known as Alliance Witten. So firstly, Craig, could you give an overview of the merger, including why both boards decided to join forces and what the benefits will be for shareholders? Yes. um, So let's start with the background to all of this, which was when the Witan Investment Board decided to do a review of their arrangements following the decision by Andrew Bell, the CEO at Witan Investment Trust, to retire. And so what they did is they went out publicly and said they're doing a review. They got a lot of asset managers offering their services to run the trust. And they received over 50 people suggesting that they could help with the arrangements going forward. And one of those was Alliance Trust. They went through a series of uh, asking for information, further information, and then interviews of the key candidates they thought were best. And ultimately, the Alliance Trust was chosen as the best partner going forward uh, in, with this idea of combining to create Alliance Witan. Now, the reason Alliance Trust and the Witan boards thought this was attractive is because we think both sets of shareholders are really benefiting from the way this has worked. So to put this in perspective, there's no NAV dilution for either sets of shareholders. There's NAV accretion, in fact, slightly for uh, both sets of shareholders because the costs were covered both by uh, the cash tender on the Witan side of things and uh, a contribution from Willis Towers Watson as as the manager uh, on this. And so that covered all of the costs so that shareholders didn't bear any of the costs of the legals and the like. And then... Really, the main advantages then to shareholders are that you've got a larger trust that brings scale, costs will go down, the OCR uh, will fall. You get continuation of the very successful approach that Alliance Trust have had for a number of years, but it's consistent with the approach Witan uh, had been following, the multi-manager approach to equities. And it allows also to potentially get inclusion in the FTSE 100 because this becomes around a £5 billion uh, investment trust uh, that has an opportunity to have inclusion in the FTSE 100 at at the next uh, review, although we won't know that until that actually happens. And that would give greater profile to the trust, which could be a real positive as well. Clearly, Witan shareholders have seen the discount to NOV come in quite a lot as a result of the news and the discount on now the new Alliance Witan is looking favourable relative to the rest of the sector. It was interesting that actually we had a lot less take up for the cash tender than might typically be seen, which we see as a real positive sign that Witan shareholders actually preferred to roll over into the new Alliance Witan rather than take their cash uh, and go somewhere else. So all in all, it seems to have been very successful and been taken positively by both sets of shareholders. And in terms of the investment approach, is it a case of business as usual? You'll continue to be a multi-manager structure and you'll continue to outsource the investment decisions to a number of stock pickers. And in the main, most of those stock pickers will pick 20 of their best ideas. That's absolutely right. So it's very much uh, business as usual for the approach we've been following for Alliance Trust now for some seven and a half years since we took over in April 2017. So as of the date of the combination, Alliance Trust had 10 stock pickers, as you alluded to, and typically they're running a maximum of 20 stock portfolios, just giving us their best ideas. Going forward, it will look very similar portfolio. The one change we announced was that Jenison uh, Associates, who are one of the managers at uh, Witan Investment Trust, will also be coming across into the new regime. So rather than 10 managers, we'll have 11. But again, Jenison will go to a 20 stock best ideas portfolio like all of the other managers in the lineup. So otherwise, exactly business as usual. And in terms of the external managers that ran the Witten portfolio, is that the only one that you're going to retain? Or at the moment, are you still looking at the other existing managers and you may introduce more of them? Yes. So actually, there were two managers in common between the two trusts. So you had GQG on the emerging markets side and you had Veritas who were running a global equity portfolio. So those two managers will also continue 
in the Alliance Witan because they were in Alliance Trust before. So there will be three managers essentially that were in Witan that will now be in Alliance Witan when you include the Jenison Associates one that I referred to in the previous question. The other managers are all excellent managers, could have easily come into uh, the fold. We just didn't need to add more managers than getting to the 11 with Jenison. And they were similar to some of the other managers that we've got in place. So that was really the only reason that they didn't come across. Uh, what's actually happened is that the assets have gone to BlackRock uh, as a transition manager, and they will be passed out to the managers over the course uh, of the next couple of weeks. They'll be doing that transition for us to ensure that we do it uh, at the lowest cost possible. And could you give a quick overview of each of the 11 managers that you employ and what areas they focus on? Yeah, so we've got quite a mix of managers. The whole point of this is to have managers that think very differently about the world. And so in typical speak, you have some that think more in value terms and some that think more in growth terms. But even within those buckets, you've got managers that think about the world very differently within that area. So in the more growth-oriented space, I mentioned Jenison is coming across. The one that would probably be closest to that in the Legacy Alliance Trust portfolio uh, is Sands Capital. So both Jenison and Sands are very long-term growth-oriented investors. And so those would be the most similar, albeit there are um, some real differences between the two of those. You then have um, SGA, so Sustainable Growth Advisors, also in the portfolio. They're a bit more based on large, well-known growth companies that are compounders in wealth rather than the, the real strong growth companies that might be small to mid-sized today and grow to, to much larger. So those are probably the three most obvious growth-oriented managers. Then on the other side of things, you've got some much more deep value investors. So you have someone like uh, a Lyrical, who's really very much looking at what are the cheapest 20% of stocks. They tend to focus more on the US market. Uh, what are the 20% cheapest stocks? And then within those, which are the ones that are cheap for the wrong reason, i.e. That there's an opportunity for them to actually really see some revaluation rather than obviously you can find some value traps in that group of very cheap company. So that's that's kind of a, a lyrical on one side of things. You have a Black Creek who are value managers, but uh, tend to focus on leaders in their sector, but often niche sectors. They are the leaders there, but they're cheap for whatever reason, uh, given what's been happening in the market over the previous couple of years. But they're very much global and would have a lot less in the US, for example, than a lyrical. You then have Veritas, who is a quality manager, but with a value tilt to them as well. Global equities, they are in the portfolio. I'm testing you here. I think you've run through six of them. I've run through six of them. So yeah, there's always a, a good test as to whether I'm going to remember uh, all 11 off the, at the top of my head. So we have Arga, who is a value manager, global equities. They actually came into the portfolio reasonably recently, replacing Jupiter. Ben Whitmore was the manager on that portfolio following his decision to leave Jupiter in a few months' time. We replaced them with Arga, who are a manager. Actually, have got uh, a bit more exposure to China than some of the other managers. It's been interesting in the last month or so. That they've done uh, particularly well. We then have Dalton, who's more of uh, a Japanese specialist. And that was an interesting one. We brought them into the portfolio really because we saw some change in the Japanese market around legislative changes pushing companies in Japan to really think about shareholder value. And the stock exchange out there is putting pressure on companies to show what they're doing if their price to book was less than one, for example. And so we thought that's made a lot of opportunities for sort of mid cap specialists in the Japanese equity market uh, to really add value from investing in some of the companies that are going to be benefiting from uh, moving more towards uh, shareholder value. And so they came into the portfolio as well. We then have GQG, who uh, Rajiv Jain is 
actually one of the managers that runs two portfolios. So all the other managers run one portfolio, best ideas, 20 stocks, go anywhere. The one exception is GQG, who run one of those portfolios, go anywhere, 20 stocks. But they also run an emerging markets portfolio for us, a specialist emerging markets one, where they're allowed to own a few more stocks than that. So they might typically own around 40 odd stocks rather than uh, less than 20, just given the nature of emerging markets and some of the, the size of those companies and the volatility inherent in some of the stock prices in the emerging markets. And so there are another manager in the portfolio and they're a bit more eclectic. So GQG stands for Global Quality Growth, but their definition of growth is a bit different to some. It's about the, the quality and the growth in cash flows. Uh, and so they can at times uh, look a bit more value oriented and at other times look a bit more growth oriented. They will change the portfolio around a bit more than uh, some of the other managers will do. And then the final manager is Vulcan, who are a US-based manager primarily investing in US companies. They can go global, but they tend to have a bias towards the US. And in the name, they'll say they're a value manager, and they are in, in many ways. They're looking at long-term value and, and when they think companies are on a discount to their long-term intrinsic value. However, they're very willing to invest in what people might think of as growth companies when they think they look cheap. So that really makes up the lineup of 11. And they're all genuinely thinking quite differently. And when you were combining the portfolios, Witten had a small number of other investment trusts. Have they been sold or have any of them been retained? So a number of those investment trusts are coming across and they will continue to be held until we think it's in shareholders' interest to, to sell them. So what actually happens, Witan over the course of recent months have sold off a few of the investment trusts they had where they were close to net asset value, trading at close to net asset value. But there are a number of investment trusts that are still sitting on considerable discounts to NAV in their portfolio, where we think there's some intrinsic value. And ultimately, we're investors first and foremost, so we're not going to sell something just because it doesn't neatly fit the mandate. We will continue to hold those until it makes sense, and we could hold them for quite some time if needs be. There's actually some consistency here with what we did when WTW took over running Alliance Trust back in 2017. There was actually 11% uh, of the portfolio when we came in that wasn't in the, the standard global equity multi-manager approach that we were following. Some legacy private equity, real estate holdings, as, as well as Alliance Trust savings uh, and the like. And actually, we took a period of two or three years to sell off a number of those as and when it looked most appropriate to do so. And we're willing to take that time frame if, if need be. I mean, it could be much shorter than that. It could take longer. But to put this in context, those investment trusts together are, are less than 3% of the, the assets of the, the combined alliance with them. And there's been a continued pledge to grow the dividend year on year. Of course, that's not guaranteed. Does the combination also increase the overall dividend reserves and put you on a stronger footing going forward to continue dipping into those reserves if and when required? Yeah, so it doesn't actually increase the reserves. That wasn't the reason for us to do the deal because, to put this in perspective, uh, Alliance Trust had such enormous reserves at its disposal that that was never going to be an issue in terms of what it could do on, on the dividend. So that hasn't affected it. In fact, to put that in perspective, the dividend is increasing this year. Uh, it was announced as part of the deal uh, that one of the things that Alliance Witan would do in in uh, in the new guys would make sure that the third and fourth interim dividends were such that it was commensurate with the Witan dividends, which were higher than they are for Alliance Trust. And so it's actually led to an increase in dividends for Alliance Trust shareholders in order to make sure uh, that, that was the case for Witan, because there's absolutely no desire to move away from this idea that both trusts have been uh, long term dividend heroes over 50 years of increasing dividends every year. We're not going to stop that now that it's Alliance Witter. You mentioned earlier that there's the prospect of Alliance Trust potentially entering the FTSE 100 due to this combination. When do you find out about that? Yeah, so the, the FTSE will do a rebalancing every quarter. And in order to get into the FTSE 100, you have to be in the 90 largest companies. At the moment, we are something like the 84th or 85th largest company. Now, of course, you never know what happens between now and the date of the next rebalancing, but it's in the next few months we will find out 
obviously, whether we've got that inclusion. But it certainly looks positive. But even regardless of whether we move into the FTSE 100 today or at another rebalancing, the simple point that this is a five billion investment trust, you've got increased liquidity than it had before. It looks attractive to the larger wealth managers, for example, that would only want to invest in large investment trusts that they could get across more and more of their portfolios and the like. So just generally, it's increased scale, we think, is going to help in liquidity. If we get that extra boon from being part of the FTSE 100, then that's excellent too. But ultimately, we're going to get greater profile if we continue to produce good investment performance. And also, as you mentioned earlier, that increased scale gives you greater economies of scale, which can then be passed on to shareholders in the form of a lower annual fee. That's right. So as part of this, the WTW fee has uh, reduced and it's on a tiered basis as well. So it will reduce further as uh, the assets grow from here through hopefully strong performance. And what that's meant is that the ongoing charges ratio will reduce uh, quite considerably for, for Witan shareholders, but also for Alliance Trust shareholders. And we're saying that we're expecting that OCR to be in the high 50s in terms of basis points going forward, which is less than it was for, for both sets of shareholders. Well, thanks to Craig and thank you for listening to this episode of On The Money. If you enjoyed it, please follow the show in your podcast app and do tell a friend about it. If you get a chance, please leave us a review or a rating in your podcast app too. You can join the conversation, ask questions and tell us what you'd like to talk about via email on otm at ii.co.uk. And in the meantime, you can find more information and practical pointers on how to get the most out of your investments on the Interactive Investor website at ii.co.uk. And I'll see you next week.